In this video, we're going to take a look at the RF performance of this Baofeng UV5R. Now these radios have a pretty bad reputation. The early ones were pretty nasty in terms of harmonic emissions and things like that. So I'm going to take a look at this one. This one's relatively new. It was given to me by a friend of mine uh, earlier this summer, and he claimed he purchased it within the last year. So hopefully uh, Baofeng's cleaned up their act. So we'll take a look at some of the RF performance on a signal analyzer. Now before we get started, let's take a quick look at trying to figure out what the vintage is here. Now, I don't really know how to interpret serial numbers, but maybe someone else in the community there does. So we'll take a look here and see what we have. You can read the serial numbers, you know, right there on the bottom of the rig. Uh, there's, a, there's one serial number here and then another one down here. Not sure why they're different. They're both on the same on the radio, but they're both there. So that's at least two indications of, you know, maybe indicating when this unit was built. And then there's a couple of power on options that we can use to get things like firmware versions and maybe even a hardware variation. But uh, basically when you turn the unit on by holding down the three key, we get that uh, version number right there. And if we turn the unit on holding down the six key, we'll get another uh, serial number right here. Not sure again what that one means. And then if we hold down uh, the number nine key while turning on power, we get yet another uh, identification. So maybe someone out there in the Bofang community can interpret those numbers and maybe the serial numbers to give us an idea of when this unit uh, was built. Now I'm going to be testing this radio on a signal analyzer. I want to run it at full power. Um, and I'm going to test it both on uh, the 2 meter band and the uh, 440 megahertz band. Uh, but I'm going to run it through a 30 uh, dB attenuator into my signal analyzer. The attenuator is rated for 10 watts, so we'll be fine with this, this radio, which is going to be no more than 5 watts at most. Okay, and this is what the 30 dB attenuator looks like. Again, rated for 10 watts. And then that... Uh, Output of the attenuator is going off to the signal analyzer. So let's get started with the tests. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the spurious performance. I've got the analyzer set up to look from 100 megahertz out to 1.5 gigahertz. With the resolution bandwidth dialed down to one kilohertz, that will give me a good low noise floor so I can see the harmonic content. Uh, starting off on the two meter band, uh, I've got the fundamental at 146.52. Let's actually bring up the table to show all the marker positions and we'll key up the radio. And we take a look, uh, my reference marker on the fundamental is at about 5.4 dBm, which is three, three and a half watts or so. Uh, we can see M1 here, we look at that, that's about 66 dB down. Uh, M2, which is the uh, third harmonic, that's basically down here in the noise flow. There might be a little bit there but the rest of the harmonics are all down on the noise floor. So the second harmonic, which is the highest one, is uh, about 66 dB down, which is actually pretty good. So now I've moved the markers to be on the 440 band. So the fundamental will be at 446 uh, megahertz. And I've got the uh, marker one and marker two on the second and third harmonics. So again, uh, key the radio up and take a look here and in this case, uh, we can see again, we're about plus five dBm uh, through the 30 dB attenuator. And then the second and third harmonics are both in the noise floor, which are more than 80 dB down. So again, I think uh, from a harmonic emission standpoint, this uh, Baofeng UV5R is actually quite honestly a little bit better than I expected. Now, the next thing we'll take a look at is two megahertz span uh, centered around, uh, let's, let's set this to 146.52. And uh, what's interesting here is I see these little sidebands on either side here. You see they're jumping around a little bit. And uh, they're about uh, 50, 60 kilohertz off from the center. So that's a little bit interesting. So there's definitely something going on there. And we can see when you first key up that those sidebands are relatively high and then they, and they, and they shrink a little bit. So there's something a little bit odd going on there. But again, that's a, you know, 50, 60 kilohertz out from the carrier, so outside of the you know, typical audio passband. That same unusual behavior appears to exist here at uh, 446 megahertz as well. There's uh, those sidebands that are you know, 50, 60 kilohertz away. 
So we'll take a closer look at those later on. Okay, so this setup is going to look at what happens when we key the radio and to see if it comes up cleanly. So when we first key the radio, let's take a look at what we have. So this plot up here is showing me RF output versus time, so power versus time. We can see that the power ramps up cleanly and doesn't overshoot and basically reaches full power within just, uh, you know, let's see, it's probably about uh, just a 10, 10 milliseconds or so. It looks pretty clean. This plot down here is showing me frequency deviation versus time. And I've tested some radios in the past that when they key up, they take a long time to settle to final frequency. This one actually is surprisingly clean. There is some wiggle here. We can see between these two markers. Uh, this scale is going plus or minus 500 hertz. So it's basically a one kilohertz total range here. So 100 hertz per division. So we can see this thing is wiggling up by about uh, a little over plus or minus 100 hertz of the final settled frequency for just, oh, maybe 30 milliseconds or so. So it actually comes up pretty clean. I did a video not that long ago on an Alinko uh, mobile radio that uh, exhibited several megahertz of oscillation and wiggle in the frequency when you key it up. So, so the fact that this is only wiggling by a few hundred hertz or less for about 30 milliseconds is actually pretty clean. So this is the same test now at uh, 446 megahertz. Again, comes up pretty clean. And the basically the same plus or minus 100 hertz wiggle or so for about 30 milliseconds before it settles out to uh, final frequency. So again, um, I didn't expect it to be quite this good and uh, I'm kind of surprised. So this analysis here uh, is looking at the performance of the radio with the PL tone or CTCSS tone. I have it turned on at 67 hertz. And what the displays are showing me here, this is the frequency deviation versus time. So that's kind of the FMD mod of the signal. So we can actually see the sinusoidal 67 hertz audio tone. The spectrum of that is shown down here. You can see the fundamental of it here. And then the rest of this is the harmonic and non-harmonic components um, are, that are in the demodulated audio. There's a table indicating all of those levels down here as well. Then a summary of those results are shown up here. So I can see the audio frequency here is 67 hertz. I can see that it's basically doing just about plus or minus 800 hertz of peak deviation, which is uh, about what you'd expect for a subaudible uh, PL tone. And the THD of that, uh, that PL tone is actually 0.175%. So that's actually not too bad. So here I've opened the bandwidth up a bit to kind of see what was going on with those spurious tones that we saw, you know, 50, 60 kilohertz away from the carrier. And this is showing that it's actually about uh, 75, 76 kilohertz. Uh, that's, our, that's our fundamental there. And we can see that it's actually resulting in almost plus or minus 4 kilohertz of carrier modulation, you know, peak carrier modulation at 75 kilohertz. So that's kind of a weird thing. I mean, it's, it's certainly outside of the passband of the narrowband FM applications where this radio is used, but it also means that the carrier is moving around by about uh, plus or minus four kilohertz at a 76 kilohertz rate. And in playing with this, uh, I did find that the, the audio frequency varies. So I, I wonder if there's some kind of a switching uh, power supply regulator in there that's moving around as, uh, you know, as the radio is keyed up and stays keyed up. Uh, that uh, causes this frequency to change and move around a little bit. But that's really the only strange thing that I've found with the performance of this radio is this you know, 75 to 100 kilohertz of uh, FM at uh, about a 4 kilohertz modulation rate. Now we're in the same test here at uh, 446 megahertz and basically seeing about the same thing. There's about a 78, 79 kilohertz audio frequency. Again, in this case, a little bit wider deviation plus four, about minus five uh, kilohertz of deviation. So uh, uh, this radio does have that weird kind of wide band, really wide band uh, FM modulation uh, on it. So uh, kind of a strange thing. But again, even so, uh, again, outside of the pass band of typically what we'd see, and you can see those modulation side bands are down, you know, good, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, 40, you know, 40 to 50 dB down. So uh, so that's about the, uh, 
the ugliest thing that I've seen on this radio. It keys up cleanly. The uh, RF output harmonic distortion is actually quite low. And the CTCSS uh, performance is quite clean. Uh, then they said the key up transient, which is what I was probably most uh, expecting to be bad, is actually not that bad at all. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Belfang UV5R, looking at its uh, RF performance in terms of spectral purity, uh, key up uh, cleanliness, uh, CTCSS performance, uh, this little bit of a weird uh, wideband uh, FM modulation that's on the signal. Uh, but uh, overall, other than that last thing, the, uh, it, this radio is a little bit cleaner than I kind of expected it to be. Thanks again, as always, for watching, and we'll see you next time.